Hi, I'm Elian from Patrick and Poodles, and today we're going to make a Christmas stocking together. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure to download and print your stocking pattern. I'm going to be making the small stocking today. There's also a large stocking pattern also available on my website. The links for those are in the description below. Here is what your finished stocking will look like. This is a large version. Again, today we're going to be making the small one together. And then I'm going to show you also how I make a Christmas stocking with pieces versus just a whole cloth Christmas stocking. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to download and print our pattern. You always want to make sure that the one inch square on the top of your pattern is actually one inch. So to do that when you're printing your pattern you just want to make sure that your scale is at 100%. That's going to make sure that it's going to print the right size. You'll notice with the Christmas stocking pattern that there's dotted lines for the toe and the heel. These are optional. You could choose to cut out a different fabric out of the toe and the heel to raw edge applique on top of your stocking for a really nice rustic look. The other supplies that we're going to need is a two inch strip of fabric. This is going to be our binding at the top of our stocking. A six inch piece of twill tape. This is going to be our hook for our stocking, our little loop. Scissors, marking utensil, fabrics for the front and the back of your stocking, lining fabric, and some batting. Alright, so I'm going to cut out my stocking pattern and then I'm going to talk about if you're going to piece your stocking front and back, what you want to make sure to look out for while you're doing that. I'm ready to get started. I'm going to start by creating the lining for my stocking first. I like to do this first to get out of the way, to get it ready so that when we're uh, going to put the whole stocking together, my lining is already ready to go. This is the lining fabric that I'm going to use. It's just a simple white solid quilting cotton. The first thing you want to make sure is that you put the two right sides of your fabric together. So we're going to cut out the two sides that we need for our Christmas stocking at the same time. Uh, so if I had a pattern fabric or a print fabric that had a right and wrong side, I'd want to make sure that the right side of my fabrics are together inside of my stocking. I'm going to place my pattern right on top of that lining it up, making sure that it fits. And then I'm going to trace around it. I'm going to use today a chalk pencil to trace around the entire stocking and then I'm going to cut it out. I have my stocking traced. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place a couple pins. I'm going to be cutting both layers together and then sewing them together. So everything's going to stay as it is and the pins just help to make sure that I'm not going to get any weird shifting of the two layers. So four, I'm going to put a couple more, one on the heel and one at the toe there. Now I'm going to cut them all out together. I forgot to mention that the stocking pattern on my website has the seam allowance built into it. So when you're cutting out your stocking pattern, you don't have to account and add a seam allowance. Um, it's already in there. The seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. So we're going to cut this out. We're going to be able to sew it right away and not worry about um, having to add seam allowance to the pattern or to our pieces. they are lining pieces cut out, right sides together, wrong sides out. We're going to go take this to our machine and we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the stocking. We're not going to sew at the top though. We want to be able to put stuff in our stocking, so keep this open, sew all the way around here. I'm going to take out my pins. I don't need those anymore. And I'm going to place this aside for once we're ready to put the whole stocking together. Let's talk about the outside of your stocking now. This is the one that we're going to add some batting to to give it some really nice body and structure. You can choose to do the same thing that you did for the lining, which is to just use a simple piece of fabric, no design on there, no piecing, and to quilt that up. So that's what I did for this big stocking here, is I just had two pieces of fabric, I quilted them to some batting, so this I got quilted 
This I got quilted and then I put them together. I chose to do some big stitch hand quilting, um, but you could definitely do this with the machine as well. So that's one option, is to take a piece of fabric, you'd cut it out, you'd base it to your batting, quilt them up, and then go from there. If you decide to go a little bit more elaborate, you can also decide to piece together your stocking front and back. So that's what I've gone ahead and done here for my Christmas stocking, is I, um, have decided to piece my front and my back. This here is going to be my front. And what you're doing when you're piecing is you just want to make sure that if you put your pattern on top of it, that you're going to be able to have your whole pattern covered. So I'm able to shift this a little bit and I'm able to trace it out and cut out my whole stocking um, without any sort of gaps. So that's what you want to make sure is that it's going to cover the entire area of our pattern. The other thing you want to make sure if you're going to be piecing your stocking is that you have a front and a back. So you'll notice that they face each other. They're not both going the same direction because then when we're going to put them together, we're going to have a front of our stocking and the back of our stocking, and they're going to fit nicely. So once we have these all figured out and ready to go, by the way, look at all those seams. These are one inch finished half square triangles. It's going to be really fun. We're going to go ahead and we're going to base that to our batting and quilt it up. Here's my batting scrap. You'll notice I've already franken batted it, which means I needed a little extra room. I'm going to base this on here. I like to use spray base. I just find that it's going to be a little bit easier to maneuver, but you can also use pins or thread base, whatever is your favorite way to base. So go ahead and base those pieces to your batting and quilt them up, and then we'll head back here and put it together. With the front and the back of my stocking quilted, it's time to take our template, trace it out, and cut out our front and back pieces. One thing that I like to do once I've got it cut out is to go all the way around my pieces with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I just like to do this because so something especially like this one, it has so many seams that just going an eighth of an inch all the way around just really helps to keep all of those pieces in the spot that we want them to be in so that when we put everything together we don't have uh, as much frustration or problems. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So don't forget too that um, you really, this is something I can't stress enough, you really want to make sure you have one stocking facing one way, one panel facing the other way, um, or else if they both are facing the same way you're really going to have a problem putting them together. So this is the time to check too before you're cutting it out um, to make sure that you've got them both facing one way, the other way. One more thing to note is that you can cut them out and then quilt them. I like to quilt the panels with, without cutting them first. The reason being is that when you quilt things, sometimes things shift or shrink a little bit, so you might have to adjust your pattern. So for example, I had planned on putting this pattern right in the middle. I don't have a lot of wiggle room on the sides, which I knew I wasn't gonna. But this makes it really tight right over here, so I've decided to just shift it over to the edge to give me more room to cut it out here. So that's the reason that I like to quilt up the panel, then cut it. It gives you a little bit more wiggle room in case things don't line up 100% like you wanted them to. So here's a good example of why I like to go all the way around my stocking with an eighth of an inch seam allowance before I go any further. Um, this right here, you'll notice, yes, it's basted down, um, but it's still a little bit loose, obviously. And I don't want this to cause any problems where it might pucker or it might you know, twist a little bit as I'm trying to sew this to this one. Uh, they just, they have a lot of seams and they just have a lot of loose areas. So all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, I do it at the top too, uh, and it just helps to put everything together much more smoothly afterwards. I have my components ready to go. So I have the front of my stocking, the back of my stacking, the lining pieces already sewn together, and then the only other thing that I need is my two inch wide piece of fabric for the top my six inch piece of twill tape. Now we have everything we need to put together our stocking. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our two outside pieces together, right sides together, and we're gonna sew all the way around, leaving that top open. Same thing that we did for the lining. We're gonna just repeat it now with our two exterior pieces. You've got a piece of fabric with batting quilted, piece of fabric with batting quilted. So you've got quite a few layers 
something that is really helpful is to put a couple of pins to keep everything where it's supposed to be as you're going around those curves. So go ahead and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the edges, leaving the top open. I like to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. It just helps to secure everything together. Now that it's been quilted, I'm going to cut a couple of slits into the curves. So particularly this curve here and this curve here. Um, these are the ones that really need a little bit more help. If you don't add a few cuts, um, you don't want to go all the way to the seam allowance, but just about three quarters of the way, uh, you're going to find that on the front of your stocking, you're going to see some pulling there from that curve. It just needs a little bit of help uh, to be able to curve properly. So one, two, three, four, and then the same one down here. I don't bother on these curves because they look fine. Uh, it's really the ones that curve inwards that need a little bit more help. And then turn your whole stocking right side up. This is my favorite part because you're finally starting to see all that hard work and what it's gonna look like when you're done. Um, obviously we're not quite done yet, but we're getting close. So it, I really, I really get excited turning my stocking right side out. It's like a whole present in itself. Here we are. Oh my goodness. Ah, so cute. So you'll notice how nice and flat these curves sit here. Again, I don't bother with the outside ones, but if you wanted to reduce bulk, you could trim an eighth of an inch away from the seam allowance to reduce some bulk. That might make that curve sit a little bit nicer. Um, I find that after a little bit of time, they just find their shape and they look fine. So I don't bother. So here's the front. Here's the back or the front. I mean, I like them both ways. There's always a debate whether your stocking goes this way or your stocking goes this way. So I like to make both sides really fun. That way you can decide which way you want your stockings to point. All right, we're gonna stuff our lining into our stocking. We're gonna keep it with these seams outwards because if we're thinking about it, once we stuff it in, this'll be what you see, which is the finished side of our lining. So go ahead and stuff that into your stocking. It's gonna stick a little bit because of the batting. So you have to do a little bit of wiggling, a little bit of maneuvering. Um, I try to get it to sit as nice as possible before I stitch it all together. You can obviously fix it afterwards too, but I just find that um, it's a little bit easier to kind of iron it out ahead of time to get just some of those puckers and kinks and fabric wanting to look this way or that way, done ahead of time. Okay. That is close enough. And what I want to do up here is I am going to line up the side seams. So this side seam and this side seam, I'm going to line them up. I'm going to point the seam allowance on my outer stocking, my exterior, one way, and the lining I'm going to point the opposite way so that they nest nicely, and I'm going to pin this top all the way around. I'm gonna take this to my machine and I'm going to base an eighth of an inch all the seam allowance all the way around. Um, this helps to put the binding on because you're not worrying about all these other layers. You already know that these are in the right spot. You've basted them together. I'm a big fan of basting if you haven't noticed by now. So line up the side seams first. Put a pin, you can also use binding clips or binder clips. I really like binder clips. I would get them at the office supply store. They're inexpensive and they hold up really well for this sort of thing. Once your side seams are lined up, you just want to line up the middle as well. So you're trying to just get your lining and your exterior to sit nicely together. Put as many pins as you need. All right, you can go ahead and baste. My lining is basted in place. Now I'm going to take my six inch piece of twill tape and I'm going to place this on the end here and baste this in place as well. So this is going to be our loop that allows us to hang our Christmas stocking. Um, whether you're making the large size stocking or the small size, 
both use a six inch piece. This is really so that you're able to hook it on your mantle. So, right here in the middle, right on that seam, that seam is going to be our middle point for our twill tape. We're going to put a pin in here and base this again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's basted it in place. Um, tool tape does like to fray a lot, so you might notice the end spraying. That's okay. We're going to be going over it again with our binding, so it's going to secure everything in place. We just want to make sure that when we're putting on that binding, we're not worrying about the lining shifting, the tag being in the right spot. Like We just want to make sure that we're focusing on one thing at a time, which is why we've done all this prep work. So with that two inch piece of binding fabric, um, this is not bias binding. This is just straight grain. I cut a two inch strip times with a fabric. Um, you don't need it to be biased because you're not going over a curve. You're just going around here. Technically this is a circle, but it's not, it's not a curve. It's a straight line. So you can just use straight grain binding. If you have some bias binding around and you want to use it, go ahead. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't have any around, you don't have to worry. So it's my two inch piece. I've gone ahead and I fold it and pressed it in half. I've opened it up and pressed both sides towards the center to create double fold binding. I'm going to take this to my machine. I'm going to open up both ends and stitch them together with a quarter inch seam allowance, creating a loop. I've created my loop. I've pressed my seam flat so that I'm able to fold those pieces back in, create my binding. This is going to sit right on top of our stocking. So one thing that I like to do is the seam part where I've joined it together. I'm going to put that on the opposite side of where my loop is. This is just mainly for bulk reasons. I've already got a really thick area right here. I don't want to add more thickness with a seam allowance. There's a couple ways we can add our binding to our stocking. One way is to open it up like this, shimmy it on, get it all situated, and then sew right where that fold is all the way around. So obviously this isn't perfect yet, but that would be one way to sew it on. Once this would be sewn on, you would be able to fold it back up, fold it back in, and then stitch the other side down. I like to do it the cheater way, so I'm going to tell you about that today. I like to sandwich my binding with my stocking. So one half is going to go on the inside. I'm going to sandwich it onto the other side and pin in place. I'm going to actually grab my binder clips. They work a little bit better than my pins. Okay. Then find the center point on the other side, line it up with your loop, and tack that in place as well. I like to do the two sides, and then I worry about the center part. Once it's all pinned in place, or clipped in place in my case, you can take this to your machine and you can slowly stitch all the way around. I would do about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, or sorry, an eighth of an inch above the fold or maybe a sixteenth of an inch. If you're going to do it this way at your machine, you really want to make sure that you're capturing all those layers, so this one as well as this one. What I like to do is I like to big stitch hand bind by hand. So I will actually big stitch, do some big stitches with some pearl cotton or some 12 weight thread, and unlike when I'm binding a quilt, I will actually go through all the layers. So I will go all the way to this side, so I'm securing this side as well, bring it all the way back. This is what I did for this one here. It's a little hard to see, but the stitches that I did by hand are on both sides. It secures all the layers together and it adds a really nice touch. For all of the templates, 
step-by-step -step photos, measurements, yardage information, everything that you need to make the stocking, be sure to click the link in the description below to my blog. You'll find all the information there for both the big stocking as well as the little one. There's also a tutorial on my blog for making these really cute stocking tags, so be sure to check that out as well. And as always, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and share and comment below. Thank you!